Special days, special days. You know, in all these stories of breakthrough and starts and, and congratulations, that Ema and what was her name saying before? What was it? <laughs> Hannah. Sorry. What Ema and Hannah were saying before is that um, in all of this, that we keep a posture of humility. You know, this campus is amazing, but God owns the land before us. Uh, being able to give financially is amazing, but God owns all the money anyway. And this is his church. It's not my church. It's not the lead teams. It's his church. And so, first of all, I think it's really important that we remember the scripture in Zechariah that says, not by might and not by power, but by his spirit. And what his spirit is doing here is just, is just beautiful. So let's stay humble, guys. Let's keep pointing people to Jesus. Um, and before I jump into it, let me just pray a prayer of thanks to God. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we're here today. We're so grateful we get an opportunity to serve, that we have an opportunity to have a vision, Lord, that we believe is prophetic for this town and beyond. Lord, thank you for the options that we've got and how you're just allowing us, Lord, to build your kingdom here on earth. It's a kingdom everlasting, and it's an ever-increasing kingdom, and Lord, it's a privilege uh, to help build it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Might you turn to someone and just say, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. Me too. How cool are these stats, guys? I don't know if you've read them. Read them if you've not. Um, we've had over 50, over 50 salvation responses in the last 12 months. Um, we've had 250 first-time visits, 28 groups. I just think it's amazing. So make sure you encourage yourself in how you're investing here and taking that leaflet away. Um, but I'm here to tell you a little bit about where we came from, our vision for the next 10 years. And then at the end, I want a time of blessing where we're going to pray blessings. Um, this church has nearly 100 years of history. Now, you might look at it and think, oh, it's all sexy and new, and, but actually, this church is very, very old. There's a guy called Jack Jolly um, who came to Wigan Outdoor Market in 1927, and the market will be on screen for you. That's what it looked like in 19... kind of looks like that now, actually, with all the demolition, you know. <laughs> anyway... Um, but they used to turn up from Preston, a group used to come down every single month, and then it became bi-weekly and weekly on a Sunday night, and they would just come and just tell people about Jesus. That's what it was about. Trust a lot of Prestoners to show the way for Wigan, eh? Sorry if you're from Preston. And this group under, under Jack's um, pastorate um, grew the church, and the next photo is the, one of the only two photos I can find of our church this is in the 1930s at some time. And, um, and on another picture, um, on the left-hand side, there was a sign that said, uh, Jesus saves, in big capital letters on the side of the building. And the locals, in true Wigan form, used to call it, that's that Jesus saves church, that, isn't it? It's that Jesus saves. Um, and that's what they were known for. And this group continued under different leaders and different... Anybody remember who Melvin Banks is? Melvin Banks? No? Okay, never mind then. He came to Wigan and the church grew until, in the next picture, you'll see that in the 1960s, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, they developed a, a building in Scholes, which is an area in the center of town. And can I say, look at the hairdos on that. Fantastic. And the church grew and grew and grew um, until we came to this plot of land um, where um, a pastor, a leader called Ray, uh, led us down. You'll see on the next picture. Um, this was called the All Nations Worship Center. And I just want to point out the incredibly handsome man in the middle. He's our founding leader, Dave Belfield. Can we give it up for Dave? <laughs> Legs for days. Look at that, um, and, under, and that's his dad actually t to the side who led the church before Dave. And under Dave's leadership, we saw a, um, a church that was Wigan focused really become something that was really outward focused, not just to the, the, in, the nations, but also the borough where we became welcoming to all people. And that's really where this, this uh, thread started. And so they had some flags up, um, and the next picture, you'll see that this is the first Sunday in this building in 2017. That was the first Sunday here. 
and um, you know the overhead projector. You know, you've got to know we didn't have these big fancy lights. And Dave, the directors and the lead team then brought us to a place where they kept on building on this site because it's always been about helping people find their way to God. Every decade, every Sunday, it's been about the same thing for the last hundred years. And the work continues, guys. The work continues. The best days are not behind us. The best days are ahead of us as a church community. And I'm, I'm, you might be a visitor here today, but enjoy it. This is like a birthday party, do you know what I mean? Just be part of the family. But I truly believe that the church in Wigan has its best days ahead of it, and we are one cog in that big machine. Now, a year ago um, to the week, we reframed. We called it reframing the church, which meant that we were changing the name and, and casting a kind of a bit of a fresher vision, you know, using some fancy fonts, you know, like Comic Sans and different things like that, and, you know, moving away from clip art to much more pro professional things. Um, but, we, but basically, what we were saying is the picture doesn't change because the painting just stays the same. Do you know, sometimes the frame around a painting is sometimes more valuable than the painting itself. Because what the frame does, the frame gives the painting definition. It, it shows you, it guides your eye where you're meant to go in the colors. And this is a reframing because we're not trying to change 100 years of history. And we're not trying to change the next 100 years of the future. We're simply putting a new frame around it. And way was born. The, the idea of being called way and what that is about was born in those few months while we were doing it. And this wasn't a me thing, this was an us thing, this was the, the lead team, media, uh, the board, and we all came to this point. And I want to take you to the scripture that this is all based on, okay? It might not be what you're expecting. So if you turn in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, you can get it online, you can, go, you can do it on Google, or you could get our app, our church suite app here as a church, or you could uh, use, uh, use this actually on your uh, leaflet, there is the scripture there. And as you're finding your way that, it's the book of Isaiah chapter 40. The book of Isaiah chapter 40. For context, Isaiah is the prophet of God speaking to Israel, a bunch of God's chosen people who are in slavery and exiled in a different country. And after years and years of brutal slavery and abhorrent things, Isaiah, this is the turning point in the book of Isaiah. So if you want something that's really positive, just skip the first 40 chapters, all right, and just go straight to that, you know. I'm joking. Um, and he's calling a people home. He's saying it's time to come home. In fact, the, the, the context around that scripture is all about comfort. God comforts his people. And I think it's very prophetic for us as a church. After, uh, after a, some crazy years of pandemic, after a lot of crises, everything is a crisis these days, isn't it? after a lot of crises happening, we find ourselves in a bit of a wilderness where people need Jesus now more than ever. People need the hope and the truth of God to liberate them out of their own slavery, out of their own wilderness, and bring them home. And so we, we are at a conjunction right now as a church community where we're kind of joining with Isaiah here in calling some people home. So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3 to 5, and I'll read it for you. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Notice the word way there. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain will be made, and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places are plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all, all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So from that scripture, which is the foundational scripture of what we're about, we uh, we lift up to our why statement, which you would have heard it over and over and over again. It's on the walls. You hear it from stage a lot and in training manuals with teams. But our why is this, for all people to find their way to God. It's that simple. It's that, honestly, it's that simple. Do you know, when we get to those pearly gates, you'll get there and you'll realize who you're surrounded by, people who you helped find their way to God. Because it's actually, that's all it's about. It's always about people. And so, when we look at this scripture and we look at this why statement, we see the word way. And in verse 3, it says, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Because we want to help people find their way. 
In the 20s, it was something. In the 30s, it was summer. It was, in the 50s, it was something, but it's all the same thing. In the 2020s, it's still about finding, helping people find the way. And that's why it's great to do the foundation stuff, which is a way for us to help people find their way to other things, like wholeness and, and health and prosperity. But a good, friend of me, a good friend of mine asked me the other day, he said, um, why don't you call it the way? Why is it not the way instead of just way in a Wigan accent? Way. Why do you call it the way? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I think sometimes churches can be guilty of sounding arrogant when actually that's not the posture or our heart. And we didn't want people saying, oh, they think they are the way. The church is not the way. There's only one way. And that's Jesus. So in this way word, we are saying we are not the way. We don't have it all together. We don't have the answers. When we look across the room, we're not even sure who's a Christian or not these days. But all we know is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And that is our name. So we know the way, but simply we want to help people find their way. And um, there were other churches called The Way quite locally, so we thought, why compete? <laughs> Let's compliment, right? All the web addresses were, were taken up. And finally, finally, in verse 5, it says, all flesh shall see it together, the glory of the Lord. God, we hunger for your glory in Wigan, this glory of grace and goodness and health and hope. Lord, we want more. Pour it out. Open the windows of heaven, Lord. We want to see this town transformed. All, all people they look different to you they smell different to you they live differently to you they look that everything about them is different but I just want them in here so I can tell them all about the way that's all I want to do I don't care who you are I don't care where you're from there's a seat open for you because we're for all people we had this saying um when Dave led the church he he led us into a period of time we become more outwardly focused and he said this that we exist uh, for those who don't yet belong. And I think we're starting to see some of the fruit of that a decade later, where we had a talk as we celebrated Black History Month last, last month, and Siobhan, one of the associate leaders, got up and did a talk about belonging, how oneness is more important than sameness. We don't have to look the same, because we can still be one under Jesus' name. We exist for all those. And that continues. But if you've seen the world today, we've got our work cut out, right? There's a lot of things we can do to help this planet. And so what we did was we set out a 10-year vision. And it was really important for me to set this up. Guys, I expected half of the people in this, this church to leave as soon as Dave announced that, you know, he was going to be handing it over to me. B but they didn't. And there's more of you. You keep on multiplying. I don't know what's going on. So I'm just as shocked as you are, trust me, trust me. Um, but it was really important that we're really transparent from the stage and saying, look, this is our new frame, this is our name, and if you want to be part of us, this is what you're signing up to. And so these were the five things that we want to do in 10 years. And each one is connected to a line in Isaiah chapter 40. And let me walk you through it. The first one is planting churches. What we want to do is plant churches because we want to make highways in the desert. There is no faster route to God than through the local church. It is the fast track to the presence of the Holy Spirit and God. So we want to plant churches. They might not have our name. They might not be called Way. Um, but they, we might fund them and back them. We may have people in the church that are really passionate about planting churches where we can release them. And then other churches might come in and we can uh, provide like oversight to them. There's lots of different ways and it's all through whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do in us. Our first one's going to be Way Barbados. So I'm going to be going there. <laughs> Just to let you know. The second thing is Christian counseling. Uh, you guys know a lot of my story about mental health and being very depressed and, and fantasizing about suicide and how Christian counseling really rescued me. Well, I think it would be great if Wigan had its own Christian counseling center. It's not going to be exclusively ours. I want this to be shared with different churches and organizations. And what I would love to see is that when you log on to those counseling websites and you go, I need a counselor in Wigan, and the top 20 all say, I provide faith-filled counselling, Christian counselling, that they can do it in the secular space, but we can create and generate and fund um, a whole army of unknown people to help people find a way to God in the darkest moments. 
and the valley shall be lifted up. The third thing is we want to open a creative studio. Much like our grocer that operates for the town that's entrepreneurial and kingdom focused, we want a creative studio where we can empower the next generation of songwriters in um, where youth and where students and for the adult population, as well as Wigan College. We want to open up a, um, a recording studio, a photography suite, a filming set. I'm making this sound easy because I've not a clue how we're going to do it. So, you know, <laughs> um, but we're going to be doing that because we believe that the poets and the prophets to come are the most important people as we push God's kingdom in the nation and every mountain shall be made low. Um, thanks a creative clapped over there. That was good. Yes, I love poetry. Um, next is the Way Foundation, which you've heard about already, releasing Kingdom Finance. 10% of everything you give goes to that and sent out and used uh, to bless, uh, bless our town. And we want to make the uneven ground uh, level. And finally, resources, which is like the most boring word up there. I get that. But basically, it's a culture of creating resources as a church where if parents want to know how to parent the kids better, where, where they want help with raising the children, where people want to be more excellent in the leadership and the management at work, whether they want to grow deeper in the faith, whatever it is, we want to push resources out all the time for free um, to individuals. And then if any church needs help, we're going to send them everything we can to help them prosper. So those are the five things we want to do in 10 years. So here's the deal. You are so needed right now. You come in here, you look at the lights, you look at all the, you know, the fancy people on stage and you think, wow, they've got it all together. Guys, we do not have it all together, all right? This has always operated on faith and it continues to operate by faith. Look, if you've transferred from another church recently and you're in a place where you're ready to make a longer term commitment, if you've settled here, get rooted, get planted. Now's the time. This is not going to go any smaller. We need all the help we can get. If you gave in your old church, move your giving over. Don't let yourself get lacklustered in that finance. If you've got many years or just even some years of volunteering and experience, Please sign up. We need your help in supporting all the people that are coming in. If you're new to faith, get on Alpha. Get in these groups. Find, find, find your people. Find your tribe and go deep with God. Because we need you. And I'm not ashamed of that. This isn't a posture of pride. This is a posture of humility. I had this really superficial, shallow dream right, where one day, you know when you go on Google Maps and you put your destination in and it tells you how long you're going to get there, and then usually on the M6 or the 62, there's that horrific red line, and no one knows why the traffic's going slow, no one knows, probably because it's like been doing road works for eight years, going through, I don't know, maybe that's the issue, um, but I would love to one day wake up and look on my phone to get down here away and see a red line stretching from our car park all the way down Southgate. Because so many people just want to come and experience the presence of God. That's what I'd love to see. And you know what? We don't even have a car park team right now. So we need you. Because this is only just going to get bigger and better. A hundred years, man. In a hundred years' time, someone's going to get up on this stage. Maybe it'd be AI, maybe it'd be an alien, blah, 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 I don't know. Or maybe just someone like you and me getting up saying, look what they did in 2023. Look how funny they look. Look at what they're wearing. Look at, you know, look at all it. And they'll talk about the stories that we, that we did. And I just think that's really special. Before the band kick me off, it's like an Oscar speech, you know, where they play the music. It's like, okay, now it's your turn. Um... I want to, just two things, I want to just mention what this is, and then I want to uh, pray a prayer of blessing. So this is just a card here, and you'll see on either side, um, there's some little strings here with pegs, and there are leaflets and pens. Those are five things that we as a church community are saying we're going to do. But there's loads of things God, God wants you to do. You've got your own calling. You've got your own purpose. God has set you apart for a special something over the next 10 years. What I'm going to ask you to do is, once I finish this talk, we're going to have a time of singing and just thanking God and having a good, good atmosphere. I want you to come down and I want you to write on it. 
I want you to, to write on it what you're declaring we're going to see in the next 10 years. I'm declaring this. And it could be something to do with your industry, business, uh, education, healthcare. Uh, you might be an aspiring pastor, church leader in here, whatever. I want you to write down prophetically what you're believing for, what you want to see, what you're declaring. And and it's not for my game, game because I just love seeing what your visions are and what, what you want to do. And you know what? You might not be of faith yet, but you kind of think this is fun. So just join in and just declare what you're seeing. Um, it could be as big as, I want to see the statistics change with mental health in our town. It could be as big as that. Or it could be simply that my great, great grandchildren will come to know Jesus. It could be whatever it is, you know. And it's good for me to see. But also, next week, we're going to put them out in a way for everyone to see. And I kind of, I want you to take part in it because I want you to show each other the kind of scale and scope, the kind of future God intends for all of us. One of us, man, is cool. But when all of us come together with one focus and one aim, man, we can do something we could. We could do more than we could do alone. So I'll remind you about that, but that's what that is. So next, the, the next ses- uh, section before we sing is, I want to just take five minutes to thank some people. And the first person I want to thank is, and this is from me. This is from me as the leader of Way. I want to thank Hannah, my wife. I want to thank her for her fantastic memory. I'm joking, I'm joking. I want to thank her for loving me and loving this church for her loyalty. Uh, she's not the senior leader, but she put there's a lot of labels put on this girl. And, um, and in Genesis, it says the spirit was hovering over the waters, and it's like a mother brooding over uh, the, the, the eggs. And it's to say to you, Han, is that don't undervalue your presence, because it's really important, whether you're serving in Waytots or whether you're planning all this, guys, is her and Ema and Austin. Uh, so whether it's big or it's small, don't undervalue that or underestimate it because without you, this church would not be what it is. So thanks, babe. I appreciate you. The next people I want to thank are the leadership team, Siobhan and Rach. I won't make you stand because I make you get up every week and do some on stage. So Siobhan and Rach, I think what you might not understand is that they actually lead this church. They organize, they meet, they, 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 they are like the concrete in between the bricks. And my role is to serve them and help them and support him. Chevy Rach, thanks for your loyalty. Thanks for dreaming with me. Oh, we cry a lot as a leadership team, I tell you. If you were in our leadership meetings, you'd think I'm leaving this place. These people are nutters. Ah. Thanks for going one more time. And um, I truly believe that you two are the caliber of apostles that Luke spoke about in the book of Acts. And we love you as a church. I want to thank the board of directors, the quiet ninjas, the silent ones in the background. You know who you are. Keeping this charity, this leadership team, this staff, keeping us compliant with the law, keeping us transparent and protecting us and protecting our people. You are the invisible umbrella protecting us all from the rain. And we love you and we appreciate all the things, half of which we don't understand, but we're so glad you understand them and that you're so faithful and diligent. The next person I wanted to thank is Dave, Dave Belfield. And I didn't tell him I was going to do this because if I asked him, he'd say no. So I kind of just do things now. I want to thank Dave and I won't, uh, in fact, Dave, just stand, will you? Just because people won't know who you are. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just stand up, this is Dave. <clears throat> this is Dave. And um, we've been through a lot together over the years. And he's the founding leader. I mean, I never cry in front of him, so I'm just thinking, flipping heck, he's having a mental breakdown. But he's the founding leader here, over 25 years of senior leadership and more under his dad. <clears throat> this building does not exist without Dave. Neither did the last building, and neither does the culture and the vision. He is truly an Elijah of his generation that faced down the prophets of Baal, and he's still part of this church. Um, people ask me, they come and they assume I've done stuff, and I'm like, 
not done anything really. And so I explained to people that we really sit under a tree that we didn't plant or grow. This is under this man's leadership. Anna Helen is part of that as well, but she would punch me if I, if I focused her too much. Um, Dave, thanks for humility. Thanks for your self disciplineness And thanks for loving Christ Church beyond your own sense of career or calling. Thanks for putting this place first every time. Can we just honor Dave? And finally, I just want to um, thank the staff because there's a staff team here. And so if you're on staff here at Way and you would have already been told about this, would you just stand to your feet for me? If you don't stand, I know who you are, so I'll just make you stand anyway. So she might as well go with it. <clears throat> okay, church, I just want you to look round. Look at the people stood, okay? We don't make a big deal of celebrity. Just stay still because I want people to pray for you. Um, we don't make a big deal of celebrity and we don't make it personality based here. So um, I want to really acknowledge these guys. So the staff of any church community is not about a job. It's about a calling. Whether it's postcode, the grocery, whether it's leading one of the age ministries or doing something creative or it's corporate, whatever it is, it is a calling they feel Jesus is calling them to. And as because of this, there's an impact on their family. There's an, because they curse so much and there's so much emotions involved, they themselves, there's an impact on them. And it's really good that we do what Paul says, which show these guys double honor. That they chose with their own life and lifestyle to serve you. Yes, you. Even if you're new here today, they're working the butt off for you and you don't even know who they are. That we honor them. And I'd, I would ask you that, I would ask you that if you ever operating or working or volunteering with the staff please make it a joy for them serve them honor the time i know you do it for free and i know they get paid you know what i mean i get that but it's so much more than that and there's so much spiritual weight on what we're doing these guys are the real heroes here not me these guys are the frontline leaders so what i wanted to do is i wanted to pray for the staff is that okay Great, because I've got the microphone. I've already said it, so I appreciate it. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to look around and find the person you like the most. No, I'm joking. <laughs> find the person that is nearest to you, or if you're a close friend or family, just go over um, and just, um, would you just lay a hand on them? Is that okay? You can do that now. You can start moving. And for everybody else, let's all stand to our feet as we bring this time to a close. Ollie, he's stood at the back as well. He leads our way students. So way students, if you guys could just go over, just lay hands on him. Matt is up there too. There's some people that we will miss just because there's other stuff going on. And if you're a first time visitor, thanks for just seeing this bit out. It's really important to us as a church community we do this. So, so come on, let's begin to pray for them, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for the team that really lead way. Thank you for their diligence. Thank you for their love. Lord, thank you that they're selling their life out for your cause. Thank you that they're sacrificing and that they're doing what they feel is right for them in their future. Lord, we pray abundant blessing and protection as they work seven days a week, Lord, to, to see this church grow and your kingdom expand in this town. We ask you, God, to bless them, enrich them, help them, Lord. Give them what they need. When there's a gap, may you fill it. Lord, may you give it back to them, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in the name of Jesus. Refresh them, Lord. May they not get tired in doing good. When the leaders are healthy, the church is healthy. So we pray, Lord, of health, physical, mental, familial, and more over our staff. Thank you that they're a gift to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Oh, man, thank you. You can remain standing because I'm, I'm nearly finished. Yeah, can we honor the staff? Can we just thank them? You guys are great. Okay, well, you can stay standing because we're nearly done. I want to remind you um, that the cards are over here with the pens, and I really want you to come down and write um, what you're declaring over the next 10 years in your own life or just in Wigan in general, whatever it is. Um, it could be something called a prophecy or it could be something that is just you want to see. 
um, but we're going to, I'm going to pray for, for you, um, and then we're going to just have a time of singing and worship, and Jake's going to be leading us in that. So the last group I wanted to thank is you. Thank you, Way Church. You are truly a pleasure and a wonder to lead. I don't get you. Sometimes you're a bit funny, but I love you all the same. And I want to pray just a simple blessing from the book of Numbers in the Bible. This is the first blessing that God ever spoke over his people. And it's very short and it's very sweet. But let me tell you when I say these words, it's very sincere. So if you're part of Way Church, and heck, if you're a visitor, receive it too. So Way Church, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord show his favor and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. Come on, let's give it up for God and his abundant blessings. Thank you.